Hey guys, welcome back in to Talking Lead. We're at episode 97 and we are... St- Actually, it's 99. Camden, in Camden, Tennessee at Tactical Response. And uh, we have some new guests on board. As you're probably going to notice, uh, Zeke is not with us at the moment. So uh, I've got some new guest host. I've got Jared and Paul Markle. I, I can be you, Zeke. You may have heard of these guys. Thanks for uh, having us on there, left hand. They are students of the gun. We are students of the we gun. Are. And uh, c- can we take the place of the big guy? I don't Maybe know. Maybe both of us those together. Are, those, yeah, those are big yeah. shoes I've, to fill. Yeah. They are. They definitely are. They are. I've, I've, been, I've been interviewing people to fill in for him. You know, when we were in Georgia, down in Georgia, Suits came in. You know, he auditioned for it. Uh, we had a couple other people. Uh, you know, nobody's really fit the bill yet, but I don't know. With, with, you, with your voices, I think we go a long way with it. Well, yesterday on the range, somebody was replicating you. <laughs> if you, if, if yeah. your, your people saw that video yeah yeah i think zeke got a little butt hurt uh yeah. because i've been trying to replace him so uh, he, he found a stand in for me or a kneel in we should say <laughs> for me and i'm sure you'll probably see that uh, that video coming up well zeke's eventually going to listen to this probably right oh yeah okay hold yeah. on hold on hold on Hold on. But, but you know what's ironic? I'm going to tell you from if you're in new, into numerology, we just did episode 97. Did you know that? That's what Jared was telling yeah, me. Yeah, we just yeah. did episode 97. You're doing 97. You're freaking me out, man. So I think you guys do, are stalking us. When we do our 100th episode, we should collaborate. I think we, we like should. Could we stop, collaborate, and, and listen? Uh, and listen and talk. at the same time. We are we going to introduce EJ? Because he's sitting over there. He's kind of has that. He, he's He's in the studio, but. He's no kinda, one can, yeah, no one like, can see I want to say him. something, but should I say something? He's, he's the quiet dude. EJ, don't be afraid of the mic. Concealed. We've got EJ Owens with Legally Concealed out of Memphis, Tennessee. Welcome in. Do I speak now? What do I do with my hands? I, I'm having a Ricky Bobby moment. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my voice. <laughs> oh, well, thank you guys for having me here. It's uh, But it's I think I, I listened to you on the way up here on the radio. Were you on the radio on the way up here? Your voice sounds from, I don't know. Just, you this is 98.1. I'm EJ, your DJ. Spinning <laughs> the top tunes here. Let's get started with the weekend countdown. <laughs> number 40. Falling five steps down to number 40. And, oh, man. And everybody that's listening right now, uh, I'm running the board for, for Hodor, and I didn't have to augment the bass, the low, on his voice at all. Oh, well, good. It's just that way. It's just that's that what he way. sounds that like way. for real. That is, um, that's because in the sixth grade, I was in the choir. And I learned how to perfect pitch and harmony. And now, at 38 years old, it's paying dividends. Well, you're not pitchy at all. And you're, you're able to smooth. sit here and enjoy it with me. This is this is a moment. I think we're having it together. Yeah. I it's think I may have found my replacement for Uh-oh. Zeke. Just don't yeah, make eye contact, guys. He's got, okay. got the great we'll just, voice. We'll just, we'll just look down. It's all look about down. the bass. Right. About the bass. All right, I'll go back to being quiet. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so, EJ, tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself. Um, I'm a Taurus. I enjoy hiking and swimming and long walks on the beach. Um, I'm an amateur poet. Uh, Perfect. And and then I also enjoy guns. So, you know, at, uh, taking the conservative approach to uh, exercising my First Amendment and Second Amendment rights, right. I enjoy poetry while I shoot. So now, do, th- you, do you ever take it upon yourself to, to legally gather in public places? I do, and I bring my own soapbox. Um, because I have personal responsibility and I don't depend on somebody do you else. Do you use your Mr. Microphone? I do. I, hey, good. Look, we'll be back to pick you up later. Pick you up later. Chicks dig it, man. <laughs> See, he, he talks, Dad on Student of the Gun podcast, Student of the Gun radio, he talks about. Mr. Microphone all the time and from I, Ronco. See, yeah, see, I, I didn't, I missed that part. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't do the hey, good looking. You know, oh that, yeah, we yeah. grew up back with to that. pick you up later, right? Yeah. And the the drop top. There, <laughs> T- can tune, you name the the tune, car that they were driving? Uh, I know, but I, I know you're supposed to like tune your radio to like AM six fifty or something like way down on the bottom. It's like going to a drive in. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I hang out beside behind the fence and I don't pay and right. I, I kind of look up over the fence and watch and listen. <laughs> All right, for those of you in the audience who uh, went to public school in the last 20 years, uh, a drive-in movie theater, so they have a giant screen. Outdoors. And they project the pictures up it's onto not it, in and a, they move. in a building. Yeah, it's not high definition at all. Usually you can right. see the hairs and the dust on the on the film. Do you want to know a secret? What's that? I've never been to an outdoor movie theater. You, you never have? You, have, you ever seen, have you ever seen one? Drive-in. Drive-in, whatever. An outdoor movie theater. Have you seen one? Yeah, they have one in Ohio where we're from. 
Does it still exist? Or uh, I don't know if they still use it. They, it. they did when we lived there up might there. Be a There's still market. several around Tennessee. Really? really? Yeah. Yeah. There is. We, we actually yes. have one in Memphis. It's called the Summer Drive-In. And... Uh, only open in the summertime, I take now it. Now husbands take their wives and try to relive their 16-year-old first car experience. Even <laughs> up the windows? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but instead, they break out lawn chairs and uh, <laughs> and sit and enjoy it and put on bifocals to watch the screen. They pull out their, uh, their I, laptops. Glory I, days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kids are like, these, these old people. We, we took station wagons. You know, and then you put the blankets in the back. So oh, we did pick and there was always there was always two movies, right? But they don't start them until Matinees, the sun. In, in the yeah. summertime, the sun does. It's not completely dark until like nine thirty or something crazy. Yeah, you know. Late. So when you're a little kid, you watch the first movie. You watch Dumbo or E. T. or whatever it is. And by the time the second movie's on. You're crashed out in the back seat, right? It's know. usually the second one's usually more. They they do the R rated movie. The, yeah, the second yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, and then they have those little snippets in between the little cartoon stuff, yeah. like the the Let's dancing hot dog and popcorn. Lobby. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and some kid is probably saying, "Why would I want to sit with a bunch of strangers around my car when I can just download it on Netflix?" That's <laughs> right, and sit in my chair and do it right, and now. watch it on my home seventy two inch. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, exactly. Eighty two. I don't know how big they are now because though. it's unlimited. They could project well, it on the side of the well, house. I heard nowadays. that size doesn't matter left hand. So, <clears throat> well, don't be fooled, young man. Okay. Thanks for the advice. <laughs> That's you guys have family friendly rating. That's right, you do. You, you but you have a deedle button. Yeah, we, we can engineer we go through, the deedle button in. Yeah, yeah. So whatever. if I say Farfic Nugan, you can. Yeah, you can cut that out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can cut that out. Not a big deal. So, so, um, Paul, you've got some interesting things coming up. Yes, or actually, that that already well, it's, happened. It's, it's it's dropping like it's hot right now. Yeah. Uh, if you guys, uh, if you've been listening to Student of the Gun Radio or following the show or whatever you happen to, however you follow us, and our listeners do, we so they already know this probably. Yeah, we well we we Jared <laughs> and I we established kind of a uh, go to website for people that feel like you know folks are out there in the United States today, and if they're conscientious, if they take a moment to leave their little fantasy life behind, and they look around they read the news or they watch the little snippets or what have you. They know that right now things are not right. They have, they have this, this, this deep feeling that things are not correct. They have an unease about an unease. Exactly. An unease about the future, about the state of the nation. But unlike most of the guys sitting around this table, um, a lot of them weren't, you know, in the military, they weren't in special operations units. They weren't in, you know, a police officer or what have you. They're just a dude or a dudette or a chick or what have you. And they're thinking, well, you know, what do I do? What can I do? I'm just a guy who, you know, sells insurance or cars or, or whatever, or I feel like I should be doing something, but I don't know what that thing is. I have that deep feeling. What do I do? What That's, can I do? What can I do? Yeah. And what not only can, but what should I do? What is my duty and responsibility as a citizen? And that term duty has really been lost on the, on the last couple of generations. They don't even, it's like, oh, well, I don't want to. or not. Everyone likes to, to yak. Or I don't about, have to. That's not yeah, I don't problem. have to. It doesn't uh, affect me. And people yak about their rights. Everybody always wants to yak about rights. This is my right, 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 right. I have a right. Da, 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 da. But no one ever says, well, you know what? With rights come responsibilities and duties. You know, everybody thinks their rights are some Uncle kind of ben like, said that. like a freebie. Oh, well, I have rights because. Well, okay. You know, you tell your kids, you know, well, I want this. I want to do this. And if you're a responsible parent, you're like, okay, we can do that. But before we go for ice cream, you're going to clean your room. You know, before you stay up and watch a movie, you're going to finish your homework. Delayed gratification. That's Yeah, exactly. That's what we have to do. It's not like, oh, well, it's your right to have ice cream. No. You have to do something first. So my point is this. We developed the Patriot Fire Team website, Jared and I. Jared did all the all the back-end work. He did all the, the heavy lifting and making the, the website. And, and we have the how to get started. You know, what are my rights and responsibilities as a citizen? What mm-hmm. can I legitimately do? to affect a positive change, you know, maybe not in the United States or in the world, 
but what can I do to affect a positive change in Camden, Tennessee? In my community. Or, or wherever you happen my to be My household, at. even. Because people yeah. get real frustrated. They, they look at Washington. They look at their state. They look, and they're, look at the crap going on in they, Ferguson. Yeah, they want to yeah. like bang their heads against the wall. And they feel like, well, there's nothing that I can do to fix D.C. And that's the problem we're in, is people think that in order to correct the direction of the nation, that they have to start in D.C., and it'll flood back. Well, how about we try and do it the opposite way? Right. How about you secure your communities first? The trickle first down effect doesn't and work. Push it out. Yeah. And so we came up with the Patriot Fire Team concept and the you know how to get started. Well, that basically led into frequently asked questions. People are like, okay, I'm down with you, or I'm I'm interested. How do I do da or this or that or? Mm-hmm. And so a couple of months ago, I sat down and I decided, well, I'm I'm going to have to do kind of an overall volume and an overall text and overall kind of how-to guide not only how to but why you should and uh, i came up with a book and it's called the patriot fire team preserving the, the republic for men at a time and when i say men i'm using it as the english term so right. if, if you're out there women untwist your well. panties and don't get all excited <laughs> but uh so we did that and the the fastest way in the year 2014 to deliver anything is via the internet. I mean, you're listening Social to me media. because you have some type of an electronic device with a little shiny screen and you can poke it with your finger. Well, how can I get you this information in 2014 very rapidly, very efficiently? Well, via ebook. That's the way it is. I mean, Kindles are fires or foxes or mm-hmm. whatever you call them you know jared and w- what i did is how I did can it, i put it on the line right i, 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 it on I the put line. it in uh three different formats we got pdf which in is, the web yeah yeah what what is it what happens how do i get it in the when web? it Nobody gets understands into the web the cloud yeah once it goes up there you can't and why does it fall it down and so it tell them how, how the, they can do the book oh right um so it's strictly ebook there's yeah, no well, print ebook no right well right now we're going to do a dead tree version but you know, in order the dead tree version is it has to actually be printed and you know all that stuff. But right. the ebook is it's formatted, it's set, ready it's to go. ready to go. I am. Jared, tell the folks at home how they can get their very own copy of Patriot Fire Team Preserving the Republic four minute at a time. You can well, okay, I'm gonna start with this. Um Dad's not gonna say this because it's about him and he doesn't talk about himself a lot usually. Um he is an expert in the field of what this book covers. He's an expert in the field of being prepared and what you need to do in order to prepare yourself for disasters, whether they be man-made or natural. Um, he's spent a lot of time doing different things, uh, decades. No, my whole adult life. Yeah, his, his entire adult life. I'm not going to tell you how old he is. Uh, he spent a lot of time doing that, and what we have done for you and what we want to help you do is be prepared be ready for this and so we created this website patriotfireteam.com and i want you to go to patriotfireteam.com um you can click on the little join us tab and enter your email in there and when you when you do that we will send you to the ebook uh, we send you to basically all of our free uh stuff that we give you and we've got a bunch of information that we provide you with right off the bat now, is this a free book free no download? no the the, the 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 how to get started report it, it costs you nothing it's free okay oh uh, it, it's a pdf it's a pdf right there yeah yeah We're talking a PDF download. yeah, yeah. We, we put the paper into, into the machine yes. and the, the paper comes into your phone but uh no, and, and not only do we have the how to get started. You say, oh, I don't know. It's some kind of crazy militia thing there. It's like, all right, stop. If you're really timid, you can read the free report. Get the free report, read it, and see if you agree with it. Now, I mean, you might read it and think, this guy's crazy. I don't I don't want to work with other people. I want to go bury stuff in my yard, and that's, you know. Oh, but maybe you <laughs> might think, you know, all right, I'm tracking with this dude. I understand. Then order the book, read the book, and it'll answer 99 percent of the questions that most people have mm-hmm. and one thing that that uh, you say well I, I watch a prepper shows i already bought i already bought 800 pounds of rice and some beans and so i'm good to go right well, well this you can't more talk than that, well right? you can't talk to beans and uh, <laughs> you, to you know beans. and i have i'm sitting here looking at about 20 cases of ammunition rock on but the 20 cases of ammunition can't stay up tonight and watch the house while I'm sleeping. Mm-hmm. 
you need human interaction. People in, in, you know, good people will try to do it all themselves. They motivate, they're like, oh, I need to do something. And they'll motivate themselves and they'll say, I can do this. But then after they do it so long, they get a burnout factor. They get frustrated and they feel like, am I the only one that cares? You know, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am paranoid. Maybe I'm, you need peer reinforcement. You need affirmation from your peers. Everyone does it. Special operations teams work as what? Teams. Teams. They don't take a bunch of SF dudes and, and like parachute them individually. Okay, you as an individual, go solve the problem. Very rarely does that happen. EJ, are you tracking with me five by five? I mean, do they just drop lone ninjas behind or, or are you better off working as a team? Is the team stronger than the individual? Uh, well, you know, obviously the SF, um, you know, parallel works, but... A family is a team. Exactly. A family is a team. Uh, you know, my family you, is my fire team. And okay. when we, you know, we do things together and all the preparedness and all the planning is based around my fire team, my family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, absolutely SF and infantry and police officers, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, for, for me, the concealed carrier you know, I don't wear green anymore. I'm I'm just a regular citizen. You know, concerned about the things you are too. Um, but you're resonating on a very emotional level because, and and I'll let you guys in on something that Paul and I kind of talked uh, last night uh, in the team room, and then we talked today about, you know, as instructors, we we stand in front of people and and we you know we try to motivate and encourage and and then you know at the end of the day when I go to the grocery store and I go to pick up milk and bread for the kids. I walk amongst the the populace and I feel alone. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like, am I the oddball? You know, and so when when we get an opportunity to come together and you know, but you got you got you got to think there's other people out there like you. There's got to be, and, and you, there has yeah. to be because people are coming to to classes and courses. And so, you know, and like really picking up, time. picking back on what um, so where are those people? What at? Paul said earlier, you know, being able to collaborate and being around like minded individuals, you need that social interaction. Mm-hmm. And, uh, You've got to talk about it. And, and he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. And there's yeah. such a, 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 a uplifting and uh, a sense of freedom that yet when you're talking with like-minded individuals, like, man, you know, I'm not doing this by myself. Yeah. And and there's that. I mean, whether it's business or, or you know professional product development or whatever, the the workshopping. And most of the time, when you're workshopping, you don't even say think that you're doing it. You're just talking. You're like, I have an idea. And you sit down and you talk about that idea. And, and someone says, well, what about this? Well, I never thought about that before because I'm in my lane thinking my way. So is it worthwhile to you to seek out like-minded individuals? You know, like I travel quite a bit. And so I have to be able to say, if I was in Montana doing something and a hurricane struck at home, who can I rely upon? Who do I know has my family's back? You know, can, can I rely on you? My family's in trouble, you know, to take care of my family, and I'll do the same thing for you. Sure. That kind of a thing. And if you have three or – and you're like, well, how many people do you need? It's like, oh, you don't need a company or a battalion. You need three or four individuals that you know that you can rely upon and that are all – you're all tracking five by five. And that's the thing about working with a team is the team has to know the mission. And that's what we talk about in the book. It's like, okay – what is the historical precedent of the Patriot Fire Team? You know, training bands and militias go all the way back, way before the Declaration of Independence, all the way back to the 1700s. Actually, you know, 1600s, uh, they had militias and community and training bands. So it is America. It is the mm-hmm. colonies. It is the British colonies which became the United States of America. This isn't. Is that new. where you came up with the the Patriot Fire Team? The, actually, the Fire Team is the core unit of the Marine Corps Infantry. You have battalions and companies and squads and platoons and so forth, but the core unit is a fire team. It's four people. So and everything is made up of a fire team. Yeah, every 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 you know you have uh, three fire teams that make up a a squad. Three squads make a platoon and, and so forth, and it, it goes out from there. But when you break it down to it, the core unit is the fire team, and they mutually support each other. I mean, you have a leader, you have an assistant leader, and so forth. But everybody in the team knows what the mission is, and they know how to do the job of the next guy above them. So if that guy's not there, they can step in. And, you know, it's it's one thing to have four guys 
in a co- or in a uh, not coffee shop in a uh, a gun shop drinking coffee talking about this sucks and this is terrible and we hate this and we hate that okay i got that we're, we're all tracking we all understand what we hate and what we don't like where do we go from there do we just stand around mm-hmm. drinking coffee talking about what we hate or do we actually do something positive because you know as much as it makes us feel good to vent on facebook complaining on facebook is not positive now if you use facebook or social media or whatever the internet to communicate Mm -hmm. versus complain then you have something and that's what we try i'm sure i know you do ej and Mm -hmm. that's what we try to do it's like we try and actually not just complain about things but communicate you need to know this is going on out there right but not only not only you come up with you know an issue or problem but your communication is is have a solution or a, a solution somewhat, or a road problem. to a solution or, or and and sometimes it's it's even getting people to the point that they realize that you are allowed to apply this solution you have the authority in your life to apply a solution to your problem you don't have to just sit down on the ground and hold your hand up and wait for someone to fix your problem for you well, hey jared were we supposed to be uh, filming this um, no. Oh, okay. I see a camera over there. I was thinking about. He, he, I was thinking about it. Though. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, I forget. What I was gonna say it's now. too bad we didn't have an audio <laughs> product where we could all sit together and put and get around microphones and yeah, know, communicate it's, with it's, people. It's sad. We can't do that. Kind of like, kind of like, like what we're night. doing now. Oh, man, I had a, I had a really like. <laughs> you, had, you had a nugget. I had. Did something you have a cogent and, thought? And it'll come back to me. He, he was going to solve oh, all oh, the problems. Right. Oh, it's back. All right. So. What we have right now in this nation is a lack of problem solvers. We have people that have a problem, and they look to somebody else to solve it. And who so, do they look to? The government. Well, even the even if it's not the government, they they might look to say their mechanic to to figure out the problem and solve it. Mm-hmm. Instead of like the uh, the thing that you gave me yesterday, uh, driving to the mechanic and saying this is exactly what's wrong, or this is what's happening, they go there and they say something's wrong. I don't know what it is. Here it is. Fix it. But anyway, my point is the basis of that, okay, that's the problem, is that we have not enough or we don't have enough problem solvers. How do we solve that mm-hmm. problem of not having enough problem solvers? Well, and that's what you guys We don't to. have enough informed complaints right? either. It's like, I got this problem. Okay, what's your problem? They don't really know what their problem is because they haven't really th- sat down and thought about it. They took our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the problem is. But, uh, well, and that, that's the whole purpose of the Patriot Fire Team. And you're not going to... and. It's this isn't a, a one time band aid that fixes your problems overnight. This is a way to get you started on the road. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't just you know when they when they when you first buy a gun, and you know, EJ, I'm sure you'll you'll tell people this or you'll affirm this. Like you buy a gun and you take the required training class. That's not the end of your lifetime of training. That's the beginning of your lifetime. That's of the kickstart. Yeah, that's no. how you start on it you know, unfortunately we have people who say well i already had training so i'm, mm-hmm. I'm good I, you know, well, when did you have training well in you know 1984 when i was in the army they taught me how to shoot a pistol and so i'm good to go okay i'm just shaking my head folks <laughs> yeah but that's the reality too i mean yeah, that's, it, that's it, no mentality. it's it, it's so it's so disconcerting to sit here and think about because the freedoms and liberties that we have in America, which are not uh, given to others across the, the world, um, we take for granted. But then we also take for, for granted or we propose that uh, I already know how to pull the trigger. Therefore, I'm ready to shoot. Or I'm an expert. I've heard that. Over I can defend over. myself. So like, I, I know how to put the key in the ignition so I can drive in the uh, yeah. You know, so so uh, this weekend. So my 14-year-old son... Um, which he thinks he's emancipated now because he's uh, uh, been injected with this testosterone that makes his head swim in different <laughs> directions. Um, now, you know, I, that never happened to me, so I don't really, I can't really relate. So I, I, I sit in wonderment as he walks through our house. Um, uh, but nonetheless, I digress. My 14 year old son certainly is physically capable of operating my truck. I've seen him do it. So, does that make him a driver? No. And does going to a driver's education course, which now leads you to being able to get a driver's license, make you a driver? Well, in the legal sense, yes. But why are insurance rates for 15 and 16-year-olds astronomical? 
but for me, I, I get a pretty good discount. Oh, it, it's experience. It's furthering oh. the education. <clears throat> it's actually uh, knowing how to operate that motor vehicle when I'm on an icy condition or in heavy rain. Oh, now there's these parameters um, I can now function in. So, you know, going back to the rudimentary statement that you were you were making, and that is merely having a gun does not make you a war fighter. <laughs> it doesn't make you right. that that prepared well, citizen. Like Paul said earlier, with basically with great power comes great responsibility. You know, a vehicle mm-hmm. is great power. You know, and there's a lot of responsibility that goes behind it. It's not just getting behind the wheel. Right. You know, you've got to know the rules, the laws, you know, the different weather conditions. Same thing with firearm. You know, there, there's a lot more than just pulling the trigger. So, right. and, and that's probably one of the most powerful things there are on, on the face of the earth is a firearm. Well, yeah, and, and also the the whole uh, people, they, 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 they're satisfied with okay or good enough. Well, I think I'm pretty good, or I think I'm okay, or, well, I haven't shot myself lately, so I'm, I'm good to go. Well, there's a big difference <laughs> between that and and not just surviving, but being victorious in whatever situation you encounter whether it's not necessarily just a shooting or a mugging or whatever but genuinely i mean do you want to just serve there are lots of people in the world today that are currently breathing and they have something to eat today so you could say they are survivors okay great is that what you want to be you just want to like be a day-to-day or do you want to be victorious do you want to you know be the best you can possibly be and this is this is just one of many ways that you can do that and the the whole purpose behind the patriot fire team because and and we've actually had pushback from people that it it, sadly ej and and left hand and well jared knows it but that people that i would have thought would have embraced it they're like well you, you so what are you saying that that people that the citizen actually has the right to determine their own destiny but you know, in, in the end, it's it's the government's, you know, they have the final say in everything. Like, who told you that you're a slave? Who mm-hmm. convinced you that mm-hmm. in the end that you have to seek permission who told for you that everything the government you do? government is not of the, of the people and by yeah, the when, people. When did you get to that point where you felt that you needed to ask permission for everything you do? Yeah. Yeah, our uh, government is not one of a dictatorship. It's, it's no, not designed that way. And we get what we deserve ultimately. I mean, sure. you get what you deserve. Sure. I, now, <clears throat> there's a a discriminating factor um, that really sets people who are listening to this show and and the group that's sitting here at the table from other people who quote unquote own a gun, and that is this is a lifestyle. This is not an act. This is not a skill. This is not a drill. This is a lifestyle. And much like in the infantry, when we get a position over time, we try to fortify that position, make it better, make it better. Well, in my life, I'm trying to make it better. I'm not trying to right. out shoot the guy next to me. I'm trying to make myself better. You know, oh, I've got, this is one state I just got to say, and I may piss some people off, but you know, say it, brother, <clears> the say thing it. is, it's like when we go to, uh, we hold a shooting class, and, and you see guys out there, and, the, um, and they're shooting really good shot groups, and they're the first to finish, and this, and the other, and they're kind of looking around for the streamers to fall down in the parade to be held in their honor. And, <laughs> and uh, I look around, and I say, you know, that's, that's not what this is about. Yeah. You know, uh, you know and, and, and as an instructor, I try to do um, you know, drills for the students so they can see, right? You know what? I fail sometimes. I don't. I don't shoot perfectly all the time. And and I've had people say, "Well, EJ, how you know if, if you didn't shoot that perfect all the time, how can you stand up in front of people?" I said, "Look, it's not about shooting perfect in front of you, the student. It's that when one day, if my card gets pulled, can I in that moment perform perfectly? And that's why I train. Exactly. And that's a lifestyle that we're talking about. Yeah. Can Can I take that to a uh, physical fitness level? Sure. Um, I've I've gotten the same thing, and if you guys didn't know already, uh, I don't know if I've talked about it on Talking Lead that uh, I've done martial arts since I was freaking five years old in a kindergarten. Uh, and what I run into recently, or in the, and by recently I mean the past five years or so, is that I'm in the gym, or I'm not going to mention the gym's name, but I go to a gym and I was trying to roll and if you don't know what roll means just do your thing you know uh with 
trying to roll? Uh, roll. Like you're just rolling with it? Yeah, I'm just rolling kinda. with it. That's, that's a very hip term. I like right. that. Yeah. Yeah. You just you roll. Just yeah. roll. So, um, or randori, as they call it. In I call Virginia. it working out when I go to the gym. Just, yeah. I'm, going, I'm going to work out. Are you pumping iron? I'm, I'm lifting heavy. You lift things up and you put them down. <laughs> can I just Many say times that, in can, a row. Can I just say that if they did not have mirrors at the gym, I wouldn't go? Really? <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> you know, that was like the greatest invention for gyms, other than weights, were, were mirrors. Because were, more, more people, more people go. go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, w- what I'm trying to say is I'm sick and tired of people that won't do what is uncomfortable for them. They do in the gym, uh, and it's the same thing with firearms training is they do things that they're good at. And if you want to excel, if you want to be a champion, and I do, I want to be a champion, uh, if you want to be that, then you need to work on what you're bad at instead of going in there and thinking... Work on your weaknesses. Right, exactly. Yeah. And and I get with mm-hmm. dudes that are like, oh, I don't want to roll with that black belt because I'm going to get beat and I'll look stupid. I'm like, I'm going to go roll with that black belt because I'm going to get beat and I'll look stupid, but I'm going to learn from it. And what if, I'm going to get better. And, and what if in the tussle with that black belt, and he's got you pinned, and at the end he says, "You know what, man? I took a lot of gumption to come out here. Hey, dude, let's work together. I want right, to show you exactly. some things." Yeah. And now, instead of an opponent, he becomes a mentor. Right. right. But you would have never known had you not taken the risk. Mm-hmm. And we are so risk adverse in our community today. We're afraid to fail. Well, everybody yeah. likes to. Everyone likes to shoot cool tight groups, so they'll never shoot with their left hand. You know, actually, present, present company excluded. Actually, I shoot tighter groups with my left hand than I do, than I do my right. You know why that is? Yeah, because you concentrate more. Because you concentrate more. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. You take your time. But people will go to the range and, uh, you know, they're they're afraid to not look good. So they just keep doing what they're comfortable with, and that's great. So you become a master of one simple task. First, but what if you don't have to perform that task? Uh, you, you know, you shoot with your right hand, shoot with your left hand, kneel, turn around, do whatever. Well, you know, I don't have good groups when I do that. I'm like, well, yeah, you know why? Because you, you don't, don't ever do, do it. it. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. And we to, don't get better by by making the put, pull, put, bringing the target closer. We get better by pushing the target away or making it smaller. Right. And, That's and, how we. Improve. And I know we're talking about guns here, and 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 rightfully so. And <clears throat> everything's fair game on this show. But just so you know. I, I'll just interject my personal opinion. Um, the gun for me is merely an aspect of my life. While I work at the range to shoot better and under stress, and so again, should my card get pulled, can I enact the right way to do it? But that's merely one aspect. I try to work out to keep the body going, mm-hmm. to keep it in shape so that I can't move off the X. I try to eat right, feel it the right way. I try to get my my mental right, my my mental state right and positive. I try to get my spiritual life right and positive. I try to get my family right and positive, you know, because those are all aspects of me. Mm-hmm. The gun is merely just a tool like said, that I a use. Lifestyle. But I try to perfect it. Well, what I see in in our community is the gun is the end all. No, brother, there's a hand touching that gun and a mind controlling what that gun's going to do and feet moving you around so that you can get a right shot and or even if you need to take a shot, you know exactly. Yeah, exactly. that goes and that goes with the training. The fire control mechanism for your gun resides between your ears. Yeah, and Musashi had a sword, but the words that he wrote in in the Book of Five Rings apply to guns, freaking baseball bats, hammer, whatever you can Swords, pick up and hands, put in your hand, whatever. Yeah, bare hands. They apply to everything. It's concealed carry is a way of life, and keep going. Well, we, we've carry, gone. We've gone. All, we've gone very far down this trail. Uh, yeah. Since we since we began, since we sat down here, we've yeah, covered a lot of ground. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's you know all from talking about your Patriot Fire Team book that's out. Yeah, we just you know if can I say one more thing? Yes, you may say one more thing. PatriotFireTeam dot com. We are so uh, polite here. PatriotFireTeam dot com. You guys go check it out. It's uh, Paul's new book, uh, ebook. Currently, so, ebook. We will have a dead very modern man, soon. Renaissance man, uh, in his own right. So you guys check that out. Uh, looking forward to uh, checking that out myself. I haven't, I haven't read Thank that yet. Thank you for uh, for hosting us on Talking Lead. We appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you guys being on. Now we want to get to EJ. We want to talk a little bit more about EJ's company, Leg- Legally Concealed, in Memphis, Tennessee. Tell us, tell us what you do. Okay, so uh, Legally Concealed, legallyconcealed.org. Uh, we, um, we're sort of a Second Amendment 
pro Second Amendment company. We started out with a uh, with just a decal. It kind of mimics the thin blue line, um, and it has the two lines on it and the number two in the middle. And uh, it's a black background with silver uh, lines and a two. So you can you can check that out on legallyconcealed.org. You can just pull that up real quick and see what we're talking about. But mm-hmm. um, basically, what it was is uh, the two lines represent the rights expressed in the Second Amendment to keep and to bear arms. The black background represents, you know, the, the evil that's around us um, in our everyday lives, wishing to do us harm. And then the two, obviously, is symbolic for the Second Amendment. So we start yeah. off on that, and then... It's um, a cool logo. I like that. Thank you. And then, yeah. um, uh, you know, we've got some products and some DVDs and, and that kind of stuff um, and some informational stuff. I, I wrote a book called Counter Violence. Um, it's done really, really well. It's your guide to surviving a deadly encounter, but it's the no kidding stuff that most shooting instructors don't tell you about what it takes to survive a deadly encounter. Um, and then uh, my second book, a life worth defending comes out uh, in January and I'm working on my third book, uh, raising warriors. And um, within the first book, I talk about, um, you know, the whole lifestyle stuff. I mean, and uh, you know, what does it take to what, what, who's your enemy? And, you know, mm-hmm. anyway, there's a chapter in there called a hero's death. And where I specifically talk about if I could pick the way that I was going to die, what would it be? Mm -hmm. How would you go out, basically, right? If I could, in the act, defend and preserve innocence, then I think that is worthy of a hero's death. Is, now this is your that's going to be your third book. That, that's their first book, Counter Violence. The second counter, book, okay. A Life Worth Defending, um, is where I talk about everything prior to skinning that smoke wagon out and doing God's work. Because just as in you could take the life of another, mm-hmm. they could as easily take your life. And up until that moment, have you told everyone how much you love them? what they meant to you because we take that for granted you know i've got kids and they come and go to their sports events but you know that 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 time they walk out the house Mm -hmm. that could be the last time that i see them right and so looking at every aspect of our life and being thankful for it and appreciating it and trying to maximize it uh and then at the very end if someone gave their life for you are you living a life worth defending? Some pretty deep stuff for a gun some, that's, community. That's some deep thoughts on talking lead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but again, this it sounds re- like that's going to be very good uh, reading, you know, for for our audience as well, and they can take some some life lessons from that. You know, there are a lot of good guys across the nation. I'll show you how to pull a trigger and uh, make small holes in paper. Um, but in the end, your lifestyle your mindset and then the applicable abilities skills and tactics that you have learned and are able to apply will be what determines whether you survive right now if they want to get these books they go to your website legallyconcealed.org you can go there uh we've got uh, counter is on um on amazon okay uh, and then just look for the one that says EJ Owens on it because that's actually going to come from me. <laughs> There's other, you know, people are selling my book. That's that's a compliment. I, I don't take away from there. Um, as long as you're getting a little chunk of the action, right? Yeah, I, you know, it is what it is, guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, with today's technology, it's, it's not a big deal. Now, are look. you ebook also? No, not an ebook. It, okay. it is a so paperback is, book. Okay, Dead Trees. Cool. Yeah, and um, you know, to date, we've done over thirty thousand copies. Has really been a, a, a good congratulations. Hit for us. How long has that been out? Uh, since February of 2014. So, okay. so February to so now, it's relatively new. Thirty thousand copies. That's good. Yeah. So I apparently we're resonating with some people. Yeah. So I'm good with that. Yeah. Um, and quite honestly, uh, I give that information out if we were just sitting around the team room. I, I'm going to talk about it, you yeah. know, because it's a part of who I am. Now, do you want to? I don't know if you want to get into this or not, uh, but we haven't talked about it yet. But your background, you know. Yeah, where, I, where you come I, from, I did 14 you know, years uh, in the military. I was an infantry officer. I was also a paramedic and a fireman. Um, uh, then was a D- I am a DOD contractor. Um, and it's not like G money secret or anything like that. Because <laughs> that shit, that stuff is just crazy. But um, 
we do some pretty cool stuff with our company for some special guys and uh not all of it's sexy and, and glamorous but yeah. um you know just supporting the warfighter is, is really what we do um and very cool and you know anytime that you know, i'm not wearing green anymore but if we can still help out the warfighter there's a a, a sense of accomplishment there and, and internal pride mm-hmm. and so we're, we're very happy with that uh and then and then i have legally concealed as well and really watching that grow i mean legally concealed for this year i was was talking uh, with our staff and we've had a 300 percent growth in this one year alone and so legally concealed itself has just been around a year uh around no it's year. been around for I don't know, two or three years now but okay. um you know working at it while doing my real job yeah you know, yeah as a small business owner you, you can only have so many priorities within a day right, right? We, and then we understand then i've got to be a dad yeah. yeah and uh you got a family dis- man you got to run your own business and then this new business and whether i believe it or not occasionally my wife does like to see me so, <laughs> <laughs> so Has she told you that I, uh, yes that in passing I, a passing yeah. or are you yeah. just assuming that right yeah. Absence makes the <laughs> don't take anything away from it all right <laughs> <laughs> so no um i i enjoy being a father um and and raising three kids and watching them grow up at and instilling in them the values and value systems that we're talking about here today. Yeah. Because I don't see that in the, in our little ones growing up, you know, everyone's going to get a trophy. Don't fight. Uh, the, don't put your the, hands on anybody. Almost the mercy rule. You yeah. know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. It's really <laughs> make them, make them call mercy before you, yeah, like 30, you let 30 32 go, points that? or whatever. Mercy rule. Is, yeah. Whatever. So I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I have a nine year old daughter and she's, sitting next to a boy in class and he's reaching over and taking her pencils and 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 i guess in that age he's he's wanting her to give attention. him some attention right, right. so what well, it's either what pull the hair or you know whatever paper wise like, being annoying yeah. in some way and uh, uh she comes home and she says you know dad you know the boy's taking my pencils and taking my pencils and i don't know what to do i said well well, you need to go talk to your teacher. Just tell your teacher what's going on. Um, she can stop it, or you know, she can move him, or whatever. Work it, work it out amongst yourself. Right. Fix, your, fix your own problem. Uh, so she comes back later on, and, and a couple days later, and she's like, "Dad, I did what you said, but it's not working." And, and he's still taking my pen, my pencils. I said, "Okay, so let's go ahead and, and go through the thought process here. Process. You've told him to stop. You've told your teacher to tell him to stop, mm-hmm. and nothing has happened." I said, okay, so here's what we're going to do. The next time that he takes your pencils, you're going to nicely stand up, put your hands in between the legs of his chair, and lift up as hard as you can on his seat and flip him out of his seat. <laughs> then you're going to reach your hand down there, take your pencils back, and quietly and calmly sit back down in your chair. I think with that, you'll be able to uh, express your now, displeasure. Is she strong enough to do that? Sure, she's good. Okay. She's good. Right, she's so, uh, I don't know, a week later... I go to pick her up from school, and I see her teacher standing beside her. Oh she comes out to the car, and she says, um, you know, Mr. Owens, we had a little incident today with, with your daughter. Oh, yes, tell me about this. You, you already know where it's going, right? <laughs> she said, uh, you know, tell. so-and-so was taking her pencils, and Olivia uh, got up and flipped him out of his chair <laughs> and then stepped on his hand Oops. and took the pencils out of his hand. Yeah. She improvised. Uh, I said, uh, okay. Well, what's the problem? I'm, what's the problem? took her pencils out of his she said well you know that we really don't need that type of of you know violence in our class and i said sweetheart america was founded on violence of taking what is ours we have gone through the back what we have gone through taking care of it ourselves asking politely and giving the the person an opportunity to respond in Mm -hmm. in in the same manner then we have gone to the authorities and we've asked them and nothing has happened and when theft is being enacted, they have a personal responsibility to stop that. Now, it appears that we have a problem with theft in our class, not with violence. Let's look violence at the real was merely problem. the reaction yep. to the theft. And I'm Did sure you you're blow going, her mind. And I'm sure we're going to uh, take care of the thievery well, that's sure going you on in your classroom. The teacher and- did you have a, a call to the principal's office? No, I, she actually, she just uh, looked dumbfounded at me, had to tell me to have a great day, and we haven't had an incident since. <laughs> now That's amazing. Dude, it, let me say something real quick. If any of you are listening, and you are... Nobody's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Those man. of you that are listening <laughs> to his voice, and you agree with everything he's saying, go have some kids, please. Go <laughs> have some kids because we are. If you've ever, there's a kind of people that need to have kids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The movie Idiocracy. That's America right now. We're 
falling along that path and we yeah. don't want to do that so go have some kids so so we're talking about kids i've i've got one more story to tell you it's pretty cool um so I've got a 14-year-old son, and again, like he's emancipated, right? You know, the testosterone is flowing. He's mm-hmm. noticing girls, and girls are noticing him. Uh, you know, he plays sports, and you know, pretty uh, pretty much a big man on campus, right? He doesn't need dad for anything except money. So, uh, uh, and a he, car, yeah, exactly. He has friends that come over, and he, and so I'm sitting on the couch, and uh, I'm thumbing through whatever I'm doing, and here come uh, four boys traipsing through my my living room. And then they head up the stairs. So I said, uh, hey, all you boys come back down here. They come trekking back down. Y- 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As I'm sitting on the couch, I said, hey, stand before me and look me in my eye. Gentlemen, I'm going to teach you a, a life lesson right here that's going to pay dividends in the future. So listen up. Anytime you come into the lion's den, you better say hello to the lion. So extend your hand so that I can shake it and tell me thank you for allowing you to come over. Because one day you're going to stand in the den of a lion and you're going to ask to take his little princess out on a date. And you need to be able to look him in the eye and express through your body language and your posture that you will, in fact, take care of her. Because he, she is his precious possession. Oh, these guys probably never came back over. They love it. For for the love of God, <laughs> when you meet somebody, shake their hand and make eye contact. Introduce yourself. Exactly. And and do it respectfully. Sir. So yeah. not to get off into a into a parenting thing. No, but, that's a great that's a great when point. When we look at society as a whole, you know, that everybody gets a trophy thing. You know what? No. Because in real life, people do lose. If yeah. you're a loser, you're a loser. Sorry to tell you, but you fix yourself and you won't be a loser. Change starts with you. If you don't like who you are today, make a change. There you go, guys. Check out I want to go EJ change. Owens' website, legallyconcealed.org. Now, do you have Facebook, Twitter, oh, Instagram? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, how can they reach you on it's, that? Uh, um, Facebook is legallyconcealed.org. Uh, EJ Owens of Legally Concealed. Um, and then Twitter is Legally Conceal, I guess, because we didn't have an, enough Ed, character. No yeah, no Ed there. Yeah. Um, and then our, our website, you know. So like what like is. Paul says, if you track with what he's saying, go Have check him kids. out. Oh, shoot no. him shoot him a, a like on his Facebook page. Shoot him a little message. Let him know uh, you agree with him and buy his books. Guys, appreciate you being on. I've got one last question before we go. You know, tis the season. Uh, Christmas is coming up. What? I want to know what's the coolest gift that you've ever given another person. <laughs> My presents. <laughs> go with Jared. My presence. Okay, fail. P R E S E N C E. No, uh, well, you know how you, you know how you give a gift to somebody and you're like they're really they're really, right, really yeah. gonna love this gift, you know, and you give it to them. Well, I've, I've got I've got know. two, and they both involve my wife. The first Christmas, I went out and I bought her a 357 Magnum revolver, thinking that that's how I would get her involved in shooting, and and she told the story on the show about how she was searching for an engagement ring and she found the revolver instead instead she so, was so disappointed so i was i was really proud of they're both precious right? metals that's right yeah, that, that's i was true. very proud of Bingo. that moment but i did score big points several years ago about seven years ago or so oh, oh. my my beloved is an elton john fan right she has been for years and we've been going to las vegas on and off for shot shows for you know i don't know two decades and he had that that one con- the Caesar's Palace, right? He was doing the red piano tour at Caesar's Palace. So oh yeah. yeah. I started squirreling away money, and I went and I bought the package, the the airfare, stay nights at Caesar's, mm. concert tickets, everything. I got everything, folded it up, the itinerary, put it in an Elton John CD. Of course, I had to open the CD, wrapped it up, and gave it to her. And so she opened the CD. And she's like, "Oh well, thank you." You know, I'm like, "No, open it." She yeah, goes, I've already well. got the CD. And she opened it up, and she's like. So, yeah, that was that was. So a, she's that was pretty a, excited. Huh? Yeah, that was a, a big time. So that was a win. Yeah, that was a success. That was a win. And then Caesar's Palace. They don't sponsor the show, but hey, uh, they should. We, we got there, <laughs> and they had just built a new tower, like the whatever you know. And the guy's like, "Oh, we just have, we have the new tower. So what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade you to the jacuzzi suite from your standard room rate." And I was like, "Oh, we can nice. I'll, I think we can we'll do that. With that. We, yeah. we can roll with that." So it worked out really well. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. He just said we can roll. Oh, with that, that's Elvis, not. We rolled Elvis with it. Johnson, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I'm more of a sentimental guy. Um, Christmas, it, it means a lot to me um, from an emotional standpoint. Uh, standpoint, And so I, I tell my kids, you know, I, don't get me gifts, things. You know, I, I can buy things. I, I want something that you created or that you did that took your time. Mm-hmm. Because time is something you can never get back. So um, uh, keeping in that, that same mantra... Uh, my wife and I were out at a, a gala, <laughs> and uh, she was looking pristine. Uh-huh. She always does, but extra pristine and, and very beautiful. And Looking Gucci. Yes, and um, uh, a photographer was wa- walking around taking a bunch of pictures, and they captured a picture of my wife. I was actually telling her to go get me something to eat because <laughs> I was talking <laughs> to somebody. And uh, in that moment, she she's kind of looking up to me, and she has a, a this wonderful smile on her face, and uh, the way that the camera was, it actually had like a little glisten in her eye. And, and again, she was looking gorgeous. So what I did was I, I took that picture and I had it framed out in like this um, palette wood type frame, and and looked all well, really cool. And I gave it to her Christmas, and I said, you know, um, no matter how you feel about yourself, this is the way I view you. Very cool. And she just, just created some it. competition. <laughs> every, every dude that's listening right now is like, you bastard. <laughs> no, but that's cool. I mean, you're right. And, and gifts like that, especially to, to females, yeah, it means a lot more to them than going out and buying, you know, a coat or, you know, yeah. material things. Yeah. Like, I like my little boy to, you know, color a picture for me, you know, make, make something that I can see because, uh, you know, I'm only getting older, just like we all are, um, and, and time seems to fly by, and every time I turn around, my kids are getting bigger and bigger, and I love my kids being little. I tell them all the time, hey, I'm slipping stuff in your food to keep you from growing. Dude, you need, you need to have... They always find food, and they keep getting bigger. <laughs> you, I don't know what you're talking EJ's about. a very philosophical gentleman. He's deep, you know, oh, okay. he, he, very thought-provoking. You should start your own little like blog thing with your daily thoughts or something like that. Oh my goodness. deep think, thoughts! People are probably vomiting right now listening to this crap. But <laughs> no, my wife's just like, "Oh, you're so deep. Just quit talking." People, you know, your people don't understand you. I said, "I, I don't care." But you they un- should. You understand. Yeah, they should me. come to your level, not, <laughs> not you go to their level. You know, but yeah. I, lo- life in general is not about tangible items. It's about meaning, purpose, and influence. Because that is what we leave behind. And the most important is influence. Are you a better person because we have an encounter and or a relationship? Did I contribute to you being a better person? Because it's reciprocal. You know, we, we talk about our children growing up and trying to have, let, allow them to have a better life than what we had. Well, we should do that in our friends as well. Yep. You should. There you go. Your daily thing is going to be called Every Day with EJ. <laughs> Every Day with EJ. There you go. I like that. And then we can go out yeah, on the range dude. and we can shoot some stuff and blow some stuff up. I'm all about that and as well. And finish up by go. blowing shit up. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Perfect. Every it's Day perfect. with EJ and explosions. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks so much for being on the show. All right. And as always, Zeke, who's not here, keep your loved ones close. Keep your fire team closer. And as always, EJ... Keep your loved ones close. And keep your firearm on you. Perfect. That's good. That's better than mine. Damn it. And as always, Paul, keep your loved ones close. Farfic Nugan. (laughs) (laughs) It's like saying peanut butter pirate when somebody walks by. Hey, man, what's going on, peanut butter pirate? What? what? You just screwed his OODA loop up so bad. (laughs) I'm so going to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Paper <laughs> 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 <laughs>